Matt of LFD Research. Now, I've long heard it been said that you can't run a semi-auto, the designs were all impractical, before you got smokeless powder. Well, mm -hmm. I decided, let's give it a test. Since we've had modern semi-auto designs been being tweaked on and perfected over the last 100 years, well, 100, 100 years plus. 110 or 130? No, nah, it's more than that. C96, so end of the 18th century, so. About 130 years. Right, so we definitely have much improved semi-auto designs. Yeah. So do the newer, more reliable designs than something like a C96, a Luger, or a 1911, yep. which are some of the most popular early semi-auto designs, Yeah. all of which had functionality issues. Because mm -hmm. even to this day, if you get a new 1911, you still got to clean it every thousand rounds or so. Yeah. And when we know black powder is a lot dirtier than smokeless. Yeah, anything that's vulnerable to not functioning when it's dirty is going to get dirty fast running on black powder. Very, very true. So, we're going to take one of the modern guns. Now, it's a cheap gun. It's a High Point 9. Yep. High Point C9. Which is 9mm. Yep. And at, from our previous testing, you've seen we really have done some evil stuff to this gun, and it still runs. Yeah. So, we've tested it out, the gun runs, we've already yep. proved that in different videos. We've got 300 rounds of black powder loaded here, because I figure if it can run through at least 300 rounds of black powder and still keep yep. functioning, it's viable on some level. Yeah. Now, it's... this is Pyrodex, not black powder, mainly because if you're going out and you're saying, hey, I'm going to Walmart or whatever and I want to yeah. buy black powder, they don't actually have black powder. They have Pyrodex. Yeah, they have a, pyr a black powder substitute, but it's what's available, and even if it's suboptimal, it still runs. And maybe. as you saw in the last video, the actual burn rate is semi-similar with similar amounts yeah. of fouling. Yeah. Now, we'll try and get some real black powder and test it. If it actually goes through this test fine, we'll try it with mm -hmm. some real black powder. But that's enough of us gabbing. Let's get to shooting. Uh -huh. Okay, we're going to start off, and we're going to run some of these through the chronograph. That's an auspicious start. Yeah. Woo! They're running fine, but I do not trust those speeds. No. It must be picking up powder fouling. I bet so. All right, we're not gonna trust the chronograph readings from that, so we're gonna do a yep. few more. Start burning through. This would go quicker if High Point shipped more than one mag with each pistol. I don't think we're going to get valid data from the Toronto though. No, we're not. So I'm going to take this down and we can just burn through the rest of those. Yep. Kind of around the 50 round mark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of build up. Hadn't cycled far enough to reset the striker. There we go. 
All right, so we're 100 rounds yep. in. We got some pretty decently major fouling here. Yeah. Can you see down in the chamber there? No, it's too dark. Okay. But yeah, there's some pretty major fouling on it. Now, let's take a look at one of those brass casings. How do those things look? They're pretty grungy inside. Yeah. Well, we've had a couple of failures to go into battery. Yep. And one, it didn't reset the striker. Right. But that's it. So we're still rolling. We got a lot more to go. Yep. correctly and then sort of double feed it or sort of a double feed underneath of it well it flipped around backwards the case yeah <laughs> it's still running yeah it's hitting a little bit low from where the sights are set of course it's hitting a little bit low it's black powder not smokeless yeah rounds in this thing's hot to the touch yeah actually the frames even getting hot but it's still running worst we've had is the double feed where it didn't eject and then it tried feeding another round yep we've had a couple of times where it kind of sits not exactly into battery and we could really feel it now when we cleaned this last so we gave it a full clean just before we started yep. running this the first rounds we ran through here were black powder we just used a little bit of Remington oil on here to mm -hmm. give it anything. So no real anything special, just a little bit of Rem oil, and that's all we did. So we are up to 200 rounds. Got another 100 to go. Let's see if it keeps running. Yeah, no nose dive again. Failure to eject. Fully. Nose dive. Forty-eight rounds down. Just slight remedial action. 
This gun's still going. Nose dog. Always on the second round. <laughs> Failure to fully eject. There was still a hot round in there. Oh. Hey. Oh, yeah. Second round, nose dive again. Push it forward. Not fully in the battery. Same. Same. Two hundred and seventy rounds. Right about this point is where it's giving us problems, and there is some major buildup in here. No. <laughs> oh, nice. We got another failure to eject and another live round being fed at the same time. We're on the last magazine. And with a couple of failures, it's still working! Now I induced a double feed. I gotta say, 300 rounds in, yeah, with a couple of failures, it's still more or less ran. I mean, look at this thing. It's just ridiculous. I mean, yeah, it's dirty. Oh boy, is it dirty. <laughs> but, it more or less functioned, which is yeah. the ridiculous part. The worst failure we had was user-induced. Yeah, and accidentally bumping that safety to like right there. Yeah. Making the trigger not work. So this little play with the safety is our biggest issue we came across. Yeah. Or at least one I encountered most. One crazy thought. Before we go and take this thing apart, will it fire the entire magazine is smokeless? Let's it ought to. Oh. Double feed. So, yeah, kind of started working again. <laughs> Interesting. This is what we're looking at for buildup in the gun. Levels are pretty a lot ridiculous, but wow, it was still running mostly. 